we've had reports for the past year or so, just single ones. And uh, we've been out on site and we, unfortunately we haven't been able to find them. Uh, but about three months back, we had a large influx. And um, so we had to go out and they hung around, so we managed to shoot them. Um, and we've also had a suite of traps down as well, just to catch any stragglers that we didn't get when we were shooting. Um, so that was, that was about three months back. Unfortunately, we've not had any more since. So it's just a case of being vigilant and keeping an eye out for them. Make sure that you're not uh, getting in the way of the mechanism so it shuts properly. Most of the lo people in the local area are aware of the problem. It's a, it's a regional problem and not just a local one, to be honest. So it's, it's through work for the Wildlife Trust and the National Trust, done, it's quite a topical uh, issue at the minute. So we've never had many problems on a local sort of scale. Uh, on a more national scale, um, people away from the issue and not d don't fully understand the problem are a bit a bit more vocal in their opposition to some of our methods. I mean, the most humane you can use um, if you want to save the red squirrel, that's the, that's the end of it. Um, it's just people that are misinformed that don't fully understand the issue that can have uh, opposition to what, to what we're doing. For now, however, trapping and shooting the grey squirrels is the best available method to control their population. I've been involved with pest control since I was five years old. I specialise in long tails. Well, yeah, the day to check some traps up in Northumberland um, has been a sight in the grey squirrels. We've got two traps set at, set at the bottom. Uh, it's something we check every day. It's just a part of the trap line. Um, I'm running from Hexham to Corbridge, Wylam, heading on the wall back to Newcastle. The grey squirrels are carrying uh, squirrel pox, which is killing the reds. Once they contract the, the disease, they're dead within three weeks. So obviously if we don't do anything about it, they'll just keep on marching north and there'll be no red squirrels left. Right, this is evidence of squirrels been digging on, looking for nuts, so what I do, I'll put a couple of indicators in. And when I come back tomorrow, we'll see what's been eating the nuts. So we use drilled hazel nuts. We put these on, on wires, and the simple, it's a simple thing of just putting them like, in a fence post in the ground. And what happens is, we use these indicators, so if a red squirrel is in the area, that would be chewed into maybe four or five pieces. If it's a grey squirrel, they're that powerful and they've got powerful jaws, they just crack the nut in, in, in half, exactly like a chisel, chisel effect. And that's the difference, that's how we know what's been at them. Reds are here as well. So we'll strip the cones back. It's typical of what the red does, but there's also been grace sighted in the woods as well. Well, like I say, I try to do it humanely uh, as quick as I possibly can. Uh, you have got a, a duty of, of care to the animal, um, and like the traps that we've got, we've got water, little water dishes in, so they can get a drink of water and the season nuts for them to eat. The only way that to shoot them is the most humane way. It's the quickest way, and there's, there's only that way that I use. And you've got to be really professional and, and you know, competent with what you do. Right, we're going to dispatch this squirrel. People don't realise to shoot a, a grey squirrel, it's not just you shoot it anywhere. Yes, you can shoot it anywhere, but there's a certain point where you try to take the shot. It's at the back of the, up the nap of the, the neck, between the ears. It's only the size of about a penny. Now, if you get a shot through there, it prolaxes animal. All the vital organs is in that little spot. So you just put the rifle in steady. Take your time. Just let the animal come to rest underneath it. One shot. Now we see that it's prolaxed now. It's went straight down. That's the end of it. The first time I've seen a red squirrel, it was absolutely amazing. Until you've actually seen a one, and how beautiful they are, it's um, 
you can't explain it. It's like everything's frozen in time, the mystical animal. And I'll do everything I can, possibly can, to save them. And I'm a big believer that we can push the tide back and, and change the trend. Definitely. So one day they gave me a ring and they said, we've got a, a baby red squirrel kitten um, in the office, do you want to come and have a look at him? So I went over and um, he was very tiny, uh, he fitted into my hand just, just like that. He was very weak and subdued, um, but he had his eyes open and he was uh, fully furred and everything. It means we can't go away because the responsibility would be too great to, to give to one of the children, really. Um, the impact on the furniture isn't as bad as I feared, bearing in mind he's a rodent. He does chew, but not very much. Um, he tests things out more than actually chew them, apart from pencils. <laughs> oh, I shall be relieved and excited because I want to know what's going to happen. Um, you know, I want to see if it is possible to release a squirrel into the wild it's, and what happens to it. It will be a soft release, as I said, um, which means that hopefully we will be able to keep an eye on his progress, at least for a while. Um, it'll be interesting to see how often he does come back to the, to the cage, um, how much our food he uses and how, much, how quickly he learns to find his own whether in fact he is completely wild or whether he is too habituated to humans to be able to ever, you know, lose his confidence. We have to do everything in our power to um, make sure that um, the species doesn't become extinct because man introduced the grey into red squirrel native territory uh, the grey coming from America, of course. And unfortunately, greys and reds can't live together um, because the grey is much larger and much more efficient breeder, much more efficient forager, a whole different concept. This is a native species to Europe. Um, unfortunately, obviously the grey is now in England, but it's also, of course, in uh, Italy and is spreading across the Alps and up through Europe slowly the red squirrel could well become extinct um, if, if something isn't done to conserve it. So at the moment in the northeast of England everything possible is being done to try and uh, beat the problem really. <laughs>